come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. All we ask that you do in return for us, like uh, exploring these crazy movies that you've never even heard of before, is that you go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. Give us a review, even. We'll read that later on our show during Igor's mailbag. We'll have him uh, bring us our mail. Uh, but first, I want to introduce you to the Internet Radio Superstars. Allie. Michaela. John. And I'm Jeff. And tonight we watched a movie. <laughs> that you was, did it. Uh, <laughs> okay, Ooh, I'm Colin. Uh, Colin never does it. <laughs> tonight we're all Jeff. Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Michaela, wait, Holly, Holly, wait, no, Michaela? who's is it? No, Michaela, yeah, right the first time, it's my pick. <laughs> right, still not used to this. Michaela, what, uh, what are we watching this cold, cold night? We watched a very underrated subgenre of ski <laughs> resort slasher called Ice. Ice, Iced. underrated, underrepresented. <laughs> like well, where, underrepresented. Where, oh. yeah, where are the, all the uh, ski resort ski resort set? Slasher yeah. movies. It, should we should we say it's untapped? Yeah, awesome. untapped, untapped. There should be as many of these as there are Friday the Thirteenth. I don't understand there's, why there's not. Mm-hmm. And I think this right. one there's totally did it potential. wrong. <laughs> yeah, Snow, there's a potential there. No, <laughs> yeah, the there's bad Friday the Thirteenth that never stopped them. Like, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say the ski ones are basically winter Friday the Thirteenth. I mean, yeah. tell me this movie didn't turn into a Friday the Thirteenth movie at the end. Yeah, right. but yeah. why? Like, why wasn't there as many, though? You know, why wasn't this equally competing with those movies? Yeah. I don't get it. Well, see, this is where you got to have, like, uh, and maybe this is maybe where we need to actually go explore. It's like, you know, countries that have a lot more snow, like Norway, right? Are they making snow set ski resort slasher movies all the time? Canada? Yeah. The it Canadian like Canada slasher movie. Yeah. Uh, what is year this Canada- was this movie made? No idea. There's like no information about this movie available, guys. I'm shocked. <laughs> okay, but we know when it was released. 1988. Yeah. So late, 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 late to the slasher game yeah, of the and, 80s. And it was directed by Jeff Quitney. Who we would know from a writer on Street Shark. Street Shark! Cow and Chicken <laughs> and Animaniacs. That's going to be the first one I Animaniacs. mentioned. It's like, he wrote on Street Sharks. <laughs> Is this like his first movie or something? Or. He had like four movies, and like two out of the four of them looked like they probably don't age well at all. There was one I think it was called like Illegal Alien or something, and it looked like an immigrant kind of story. And I was like, ah, oh, hey, I'm gonna stay away from this. I so don't, about I don't like feel a comfortable. Spaceman. Um, <laughs> there With was, an ironic title, like no, man. no, it like the the cover looked very serious, oh. so it didn't look like that. Um, they didn't invent irony until 1992. You know this, yeah. It was like a kid in sand, Colin. So it did not look like it was meant to be uh, tongue in cheek. Did you say he was a writer on Animaniacs? Yeah. See, now that to me gives them a little more credit because that was actually a pretty witty cartoon. Very like. Yeah, very tongue in cheek, very like, you know, or it kind of was like proto South Park, you know, like we're going to kind of like lampoon everybody. Yeah. Uh, which like the revival, I don't know if you guys have watched that on Hulu. It's, it's right. Mm-mm, I'm watching. Mm. Yeah, I watched an episode. So you made this movie in the underrepresented genre of the ski resort slasher movie, except there's not really a ski. See, I guess that's maybe what I was saying. Like uh, when you pitched this last week, I had visions of. This is going to be Hot Dog the movie, crossbred with Friday the 13th. You know, ski instructors and like all these people up there getting into hijinks and, you know, uh, but it's a kind of a different thing, uh, this movie. Um, it's a slasher movie starring a cast of adults. So that brings I mean, me- yeah, the Friday it's the 13th a- ones are adults, though, too. Like, they're all it's the a- counselors. A- they're not the kids it's- at the camp. It's a slasher movie starring contract negotiations. uh, That's what it feels like. (laughs) And vacation condos and real estate. Yeah. Yeah, it leans heavy into that in its plot devices, probably because uh, maybe maybe our writer was trying to buy a house. Who wrote this movie? 
It was written by Joseph (laughs) Allen Johnson, who has a really prominent role in this movie as the character Alex. That's right. So if you want to, if you want to get employment in Hollywood, you write your own movie and you give yourself a role in it. Uh, Which, um, breaking news, he has, he is two steps of the way to being in the freak show wall of fame because he was in slumber party massacre. Oh, Oh, that's right. Right, 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 right. Yeah. 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 Uh, so would, would we call this a, a ski slasher genre? Or we call it a real estate slasher genre. Well, that, and then you go with the like Saw Five, right? That, that's when you're stepping into like the real estate schemes, and somebody's got to get somebody. And uh, Terror Trek. Yeah, of? yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There we go. Was Saw Five a, 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 a like a property dispute horror movie? One of like, them was, was like you. I want to play a game that with you. Went off the rails because you got. Oh. Actually, I like that one. That was probably one of my favorites of the post. <laughs> the post Lee Winnell, uh, you know, written saws. I think I never went past three, and I'm okay with that. I may have the wrong one. It might be four. I I can't tell the difference. <laughs> got to go back and watch those again. Uh, the yeah. saw movies. Um. Okay, so uh, we've got a cast of. Uh, Adult characters, when I say adult, I mean, they're at least like, you know, late 20s, uh, early 30s. Um, the top yeah, they have, line, they're adults. They have, they have obligations. They have debt. Uh, yeah, they're, they're they definitely adults. Habits. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about some of these characters as we get in. I mean, uh, but uh, as far as like notable people, I think one of the guys who played, um, what was it, Carl, the drug dealer who comes along with them? Carl's a, it's a, these group of friends, right, who, event, well, it, who go to a ski lodge, basically a condo for a weekend, and then there's a serial killer who, you know. Uh, well, they're, they're re-invited back. There was, yeah. we, we have, uh, we have, I mean, the story that we've seen uh, uh, many times, Slaughter High comes to mind, where there's. Again, the incident, the cold open. I mean, literally in this point. Bah-ha-ha. Inciting event, yeah. The, yeah. Um, right, this our, is by the rules open. of slasher movie cinema. You're inciting yes. incident. Yes, I, yeah. You're inciting incident. What, what kicks this whole thing off or what causes the mayhem that is to come? Uh, in this one, we have, we have Jeff. Jeff is our star early on in this movie. Um, what is Jeff's deal? He's a, not a very well-adjusted young no. man. Right. No. This is. I think this is. This takes place in like the college age, right? These characters are supposed to be like in college. Yes. And there's Jeff and uh, Duder. Anybody? Mm-hmm. Duder, Duder's name. Honestly, all these men look the same and had the same haircut, so it was very hard for me to tell them apart. Right. And Trina. Right. Trina is our. Uh, well, I mean, a, a protagonist. Wait, wasn't the movie. based on Trina, the yeah. ending of that movie? Wasn't that guy Alex? The guy that they that he skis against in the beginning in the cold open. No, that was wasn't that Corey? No, yeah, that's Corey. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's a love triangle. We'll come back there's, to that then. There, yeah, there's a there's a situation that's set up at the beginning where basically it seems like these three and maybe more people are there that I just wasn't paying attention to. There's a bunch of people in the ski resort. And there's our guy oh, ba- Jeff. No, basically basically Jeff is just misunderstood, right? They're questioning his integrity as a skier. That's the problem here. That is the main issue. That's what sets him off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's very true. And Corey <laughs> is b- making the moves on Trina, and Jeff likes Trina, right? So you came up yeah. here with me, and she's like, I came up here by myself. And like, yeah, okay. But there's a challenge, right? Because Jeff is like, I'm going <laughs> to challenge you, Corey, to this ski the uh, race yeah okay all right so this is this is kind of <laughs> where like i started to have some questions about the quality some, of- some tingly feeling yes what? <laughs> what, what's, uh, okay <laughs> i mean the first thing that kind of set you off and i don't know if i'm just sensitive to this kind of stuff is a film score right what, what, uh, how would you describe this film score tingling <laughs> loud <laughs> tinkling yeah <laughs> tinkling i don't know it's scores like this you hear in it feels like a very basic score you hear in a lot of direct-to-video movies it always gives me a bad feeling like i'm in like this isn't gonna be good uh, yeah 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 okay so it was yeah, okay so it's not just yeah, no think- it, it's it's the music that's just like Ugh. but i still think it's better than the slaughter high score 
you guys remember how terrible I that didn't... tour was? I that was yeah. Harry Manfredini, it. right? Did that yes. one? Yeah, we oh. hated it. Yeah. At least it's kind of yeah, kind of catchy at the beginning. We until talked it at length about how much we hated that tour. I... Yeah, I don't remember how it went, but I remember hating it. But the 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 difference even there, I think I, you hate it because it just sounds. You just don't like the sound of it, but at least Harry Manfredini does kind of sort of know how to score a scene and follow right. like the dramatic tempo of a scene. But Colin, I feel like you said the opposite on that episode. Maybe. I feel like we talked about how he <laughs> just t- took his Friday the 13th one and like slowed it down. Yeah. For his themes and all that. This one really one, is yeah. a guy with a keyboard who does not like understand dramatic intent of a scene at all. And just basically, you know, it's, it's supposed to be tense here. So I'm going to play tense music. That's exactly the same pitch for the entire scene and we're not like rising and falling and there's no suspense no no yeah, yeah like that's a, like no rising and falling that's yeah. the problem mm-hmm. it's like oh this could no, be a quiet scene here you i know. don't know if sound can induce a seizure but i feel like it could in that movie yeah and Alan, I'd, I'd like i'd like to correct you there i believe it was a man with a keyboard and a mountain of coke <laughs> i don't think it was just the keyboard so <laughs> yeah much like much like we see in this movie where he dumps an entire bag of coke on a full-length mirror yeah like that you know what baller move man I gotta say i can, I can honestly say it's, i've never seen that before it's the ultimate mirror to do drugs off of like it's made for it just like but it also it no but it also isn't because if you tip it all your shit's going in the carpet he ain't it's tipping true. that shit he knows yeah. how much it costs but nobody I know but i'm just saying it's unstable man yeah it's it's dangerous because i mean that stuff ain't cheap but think of the lines i was gonna so say did he sit and separate the lines of that entire bag, or did he just shove his face in it? I think he was doing Ooh. Scarface. Yeah, who was yeah, the king? I want to believe. I was picturing a Scarface scenario. Yeah, the king of the mountain w- of coke. I want to believe he did a line the whole length of the mirror. Yeah, I don't think he like, was. That's what I'm going with. But I don't think he made a line because the shot. I like that. <laughs> the shot cuts away as he's like he just dumps the cocaine out on the uh, the mirror and then like gets his straw and he's about to just snort the whole. Th- it's not in a line. It's just. Like, not a line. It's just a pile. You shouldn't do drugs, kids. Okay, I mean, but we've watched I mean, enough if you, movies if, to know. If you stand back enough, it's a line, right? <laughs> yeah. If you get far enough away, it's a line. Um, I'm just saying, use that, use that real estate of that mirror, man. Really yeah, stretch it all out. Yeah. yeah, kids don't do drugs, and if you do, find someone who knows how to do them so you learn how. At least, <laughs> yeah, have an advisor. Do them the right film. way. Yeah. <laughs> don't embarrass yourself while you're doing drugs, okay? Learn how to do them correctly, please. I'm just I'm just amazed because this is the eighties. This is clearly a movie of like not professional actors, people that I feel like would have experience doing blow, and obviously no one on this set knew how to do it, which blows my mind. They didn't have Yeah, were their, these a bunch of no church touching? camp kids or something? Right? <laughs> no, no, it turns out not at all. But uh but we'll get to that. The um so this scene, which is our like setup, dramatic, you know, inciting event moment, kind of is um, is scored in a way that like because this is what I'm saying. This this scene is the the two guys racing each other down the hill, right, to find out who's the better skier. Yeah, and, this is the yes. Kate Falls scene in Better Off Dead. Yeah, if you don't have a good score, or if the scene is not telling you like some kind of like dramatic thing, then it is just footage of people skiing down a hill there's no dramatic tension there you know what i mean it's just like okay now we're watching not, them skiing did you not see how close they were to each other colin like it was neck and neck come on was it working for you i'm picking no. up your sarcasm it, it reminded me of rad honestly in the the final bike scene in rad it had the very yeah. very similar energy yeah it's it's one of those where they're just like okay everything in this scene is extremely slow we need the music to speed it up a bit. We're not even we're not gonna mess with the footage or anything. We just need the music to get us there. I really I really lost it at those close ups of just their shoulders moving back and forth against a black background. Like they were clearly like yeah. in a in a building did, somewhere. Did we mention that this movie opens with moonlight skiing? Did we oh, did yeah. we talk about that? No. Oh my god. <laughs> this is new. I mean, I'm not a skier, I've never been skiing in my life. But I didn't realize that there was like nighttime skiing where everyone carries flares. I didn't uh, know this was a thing. Definitely not a safety hazard at all. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Was this like a ski rave? Should they have been glow sticks? That would have been really they, cool, I don't, actually. Did they have glow sticks then? I don't know. I don't know. They had flares. So that's why they had flares, because they didn't have glow sticks then. Because so, this, is, this is moonlight skiing. Didn't know it was a thing. Yeah. I like that it's a thing. 
But um, what was his name? Carrie? I can't remember. Our- Corey? Corey. Corey. Either intentionally or unintentionally. I got the feeling it was unintentional. Somehow crosses his ski with Jeff. Jeff takes a tumble and Corey makes down. He's like, hey, dude, are you okay? And Jeff's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And this comes- without, but without saying it, Colin, just you, the, the anguish on his face. Yeah, well, yes. even it. though he was wearing a helmet and a mask and uh, probably other things, yeah, I can sense the anguish. Body acting, and, right? Yeah. Yes, he and throws his ski pole. Off, he throws his ski pole. I <laughs> thought he was going to hit him. Like I thought that's where this movie was going. I'm like, oh, this is the scene. This is where there's an accidental death. No, you would I think- was disappointed. So disappointed he didn't get a ski. Uh, thing in the back yeah it was, uh, i was hoping it would have at least hit him and then like he would have lost his balance and fell off the cliff you know <laughs> right to cut to know. cut to broad daylight and they're just throwing a dummy off the cliff <laughs> like, yes. yeah. yeah yes well jeff goes That's back to the bar everybody goes back to the bar where awesome 80s pop tunes are playing and uh while the cool kids are all like jeff come over and hang out with us jeff is stewing stewing at his table where he's talking to an invisible person. This is someone who's not seen to us. And we're like, is Jeff talking with himself? Or is he talking right. to someone that we're not able to see? And he <laughs> says those key phrases that this is just like that time at that clinic in Switzerland, you know, where they were on me for whatever. And I just hate them so much. It makes me want to kill them. And you're like, oh, 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 mm-hmm. oh boy. Jeff is going right off that. Then he hears the sound of uh, Corey and Trina arm wrestling in their hotel room, which sounds, I guess, a lot like uh, sex. So it's Jeff- not a euphemism. That is literally <laughs> no. what's happening. They're, yes. arm- <laughs> They're arm wrestling. And so he bursts in and he's like, I'm going to fucking, you just ruined everything. Oh, it- first he says, you fuckers, as he falls against the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. He was a perfectly nice gentleman until that point. He was like, you fuckers. And they laugh at him. That's the thing, right there. It sets you off, right? Because then he's being mocked. Yeah, never, never laugh at somebody. Have we learned nothing? Yeah. They're all gonna laugh at you. Have we learned nothing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that triggers the psychotic to yes. eventually come after you at some point in, in the future. Well, yeah, five years later, at least. And so then I laughed at a dude three years ago, and I'm still on pins and needles. I only got two more years to go, and I'm safe. You better start looking over your shoulder now. I, yeah, I know. It's getting to the point. It's coming. <laughs> Justice prevails. The so the um so then the director makes this fantastic uh montage editorial decision. And what he's gonna do is cause Jeff is going to go off and go skiing by himself in a pissed off rage. That's how he's gonna calm himself down, because skiing is their medicine, these people. So he's gonna go down in the dark by himself, and that is intercut with uh Corey and Lee getting on. Like Full on, like screwing in their hotel, like, covered with loving camera angles and intercut. We're going back and forth between dude out there, and it was really weird. <laughs> Maybe not as weird as last week. Too many angles. <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't need to see this much. I know, but uh, they're also. <laughs> uh, this is where the score kicks in again because. In, a, in some roundabout way, he's really trying to build up to a moment. Like they're really setting up a moment here. Like we're 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 starting to crescendo both with the sex, the skiing, and the music. The climax and so is we coming. Think, right. It, it, it yeah. Right. It literally is. Like they're really just laying it in there, and so we don't know what's really happening. We don't know what Jeff's going to do or how he's because, like you said, they're cross cutting, so they're connected. But what's Jeff going to do? I personally thought he was going to ski down a hill. And ski through them and kill them. And I was really <laughs> hoping that was what was going to happen. Like ski yeah. through the window into yes, the... Yeah. into them. And just, like yeah. two skis sticking through their back or something like that. Yeah, like, that I would was, require money, Sean, and the ability to hoping, damage property. I, I was, I was hoping, hoping he was like, going to come straight forward with both ski poles and just like, ah, and like just run them both through. Right. Yeah. Something like that. Instead, yeah. we got like... like jousting. Just, I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, instead, uh, the man decided to uh, take a trip off a cliff. Um, well, like, uh, well, what's the Ari, well, what's the Ari Aster movie? The new, the latest one, uh, Midsummer. Yeah, it's like when they when the old folks jump off the cliff and land on the rock. Oh, That's yeah, what this yeah. felt like to me. The way he landed on it, just <laughs> <laughs> then he's still alive. That was like, ooh, where's this movie going? Uh, he lands like in his stomach on this fucking rock and then rolls off. He's still the, alive. <laughs> It was only three rocks within a mile facility. (laughs) Yeah, he rolls off. They're all pointy. uh, 
Uh, then we then we cut to like four years later or something like that, right? Wasn't it several years after this? Four years yeah, later. They, yeah. en- they avengered us. Okay. So four years later we get this set up. So now this is where our real estate comes into play because uh, all of these people of whom we only met three previously are all going to take a trip up to this condo that I think that are, is somebody buying this? There's a lot of talk about like it costs two hundred fifty thousand dollars and so and so. It's like it's like it's when like you go to share. one of those. It's like when you go to one of those like timeshare presentations, and if you sit through it, you get something for free. Yep. If you sit through their spiel, you get a free ski weekend. Basically, is what it yep. is. Okay. Okay, that's what's happening. So yeah. all of them have been invited up to participate in this. We get a long reading of the brochure and the car ride up because, God damn it, they wrote it. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna listen to it. Um, a lot of information in that in that car ride. Yeah, is it extraneous information? Yeah, yeah, yeah none of it's important. Okay. Well, among our it's characters, runtime. That we have here. We have, uh, obviously, um, Corey and, and Trina are now married, um, They and they bring up their friend Jeanette. So um, Jeanette is the biggest name in the cast. Jeanette uh, is played by Lisa Loring, and Lisa Loring was Wednesday Adams, famously on the old uh, Adams Family TV show, right? Oh. Uh, but then she grew up. Uh, she was married at one point to uh, the guy who played the drug dealer. Um, that was because uh, both of them ended up like they were on uh, competing um, uh, soap operas. Can't remember if it was oh. and the and the world turns, and he was on something else. But then, Kaylee, you did some looking into this. You know the story of Lisa Loring. No, all I know is that they were married at the time they were making this movie. Okay, so that's what IMDb says. However, she fact got, checking that. <laughs> yeah, because she got married to the dude. What's his name? Doug something. Uh, Doug. Doug Stevenson. Oh, so she was married to Corey. Sorry, she was married to Corey. Doug Stevenson uh, in 1981, um, but in like 87 or something like that. So she worked in the porn industry, not like as a performer, but she did hair and makeup for porn stars. That's where she met her next husband, who was a porn uh, uh, performer on the set of one of Tracy Lord's first movies. Tracy Lord's was like underage when she was doing her. So they worked on that movie, got married. And then uh, he couldn't leave porn behind. And so they ended up on the Sally, Sally Jesse Raphael show in the 80s where they had to expose their whole like he his secret porn pack because he was like still going off and doing it because he was addicted to the lifestyle. Oh, yeah. no. It was like Jerry Butler or something like that was his name. I'm sorry if I'm getting the name wrong. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> but I uh, mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I want to watch this episode. I'm sure it's right? on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So there you go. Um, so anyway, she yeah, plays. There's some information for you. Well, then all of a sudden now, you know, when you're like, oh, that's Wednesday Adams. But she's also like extremely exhibitionist in this movie. Um, yeah. We see a lot of uh, Elisa Loring as the movie goes on. Um, they also bring up um, their friend uh sorry the other guy with the c the drug dealer that's carl the, that's that's carl crazy carl and then they bring up like a pediatrician and his wife and basically these are the victims in your slasher they movies. really hit home hit, hit at home that he's a pediatrician like they really make sure you know that yeah yeah why? they're talking procedures and everything why i don't why i don't know Run time is my only guess. Yeah, I, I think you're right because uh, because uh, what's his name? Uh, so Jeff is the director, right? Who's the writer? Is he also Jeff? Alex? No, the the writer is Joseph Allen Johnson. Joseph. The guy who's Alex. Let's call him Jeff. Uh, so Joseph, <laughs> you know, it's like well, character, right? We got to ba- build these characters up and give them something interesting to talk about. I'm like you're talking about a lot of stuff, but is this interesting? <laughs> you know, that you're a pediatrician. <laughs> And you have all these uh, procedures on diabetic kids. This is uh, this comes down to something else that we've often talked about on the show, which is the principle of Chekhov's gun. Mm. Um, you guys know what this principle actually is in drama? 
We've talked about it a lot on this show, so yeah. yes. But yeah, from Chekhov idea. plays, where they introduce where they introduce an element beginning of the movie, and by the end of the movie, it needs to be paid off. Yeah, because it's basically usually like, it's a if, gun. Because it's the idea is if like if nothing if the thing doesn't matter, you have to get rid of it, and you only keep like right. the good stuff, and you don't set anything off uh, up unless there's a payoff later on. So all of this dialogue about like pediatricians and all that stuff, it's like what does it matter to anybody? <laughs> What's going on here? Um, I mean, they, I'm supposed they could have just inserted a random scene of him giving birth to uh, him helping a woman give birth. If that would have, did you, did you want that? We could have put that in there. <laughs> would, that, would that have helped? Like, okay, he had a purpose. He has a job. He no. delivered a baby. Is that no? Because that scene still wouldn't have mattered to the plot of this movie. No, sure, but don't. All you have to do is like you have a scene where he has to offer medical assistance to somebody. Yeah. That doesn't seem like that hard of a reach. We're going to put a doctor in your movie, but what, it's the point. especially if it's a movie where people are getting killed or injured at some point. I'm I'm convinced they made it. They made it a point to make him a pediatrician and like make it well known, just so they could use that baby doc on board sticker on the car. <laughs> there you go. That's the only reason they really they like showcase that. You yeah, might be correct. Like, we found the sticker. We think it's hilarious. We're putting it in the movie. We have to make it appropriate. Right. Or they should have paid it off funny, where like someone could send her injury, but he's like, "I'm a pediatrician. I only know how to treat, treat kids." <laughs> Compound fractures are out of my, you know, yeah. You know, right. There's a million different works. ways you can go with this, and they went none of these. Yeah, and they went nothing. Um, they went, "I'm I'm boring and severe." Yeah, there was a lot of it where it kind of felt like this is um, like a filmed version of like an actor's workshop or something like that. Like, it, did did it have the? I mean, did it feel especially like with the weight with his secretary? That's with Alex and his secretary. That oh really felt God. like he was hands down the worst person in this entire movie. It makes us feel like sexual harassment videos. You have to watch at work. Like that's yes. the level of mm-hmm. acting in mm-hmm. this. Yeah, which yeah. are hilarious in their own right, but. Not you know, not for the sexual harassment stuff. Did the uh, the guy who wrote this? Did he write porn? It wasn't uh, listed on his IMDb, so <laughs> that means nothing. No, they're, yeah. they're not going to let him write Animaniacs if he's writing porn, will they? No, that was the director. <laughs> oh, the director. Sorry, uh, right. I didn't. Wasn't there someone who directed a Marvel movie that used to do porn? Didn't James Gunn used to be involved with porn or something? Uh, was there was someone trauma. really well known that used to in trauma movies. I mean, Craven um, did, but yeah, I was great. Well, yeah, everybody in the seventies did. Um, yeah, I wouldn't art, be surprised if films. they all if they all wrote porn. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, no, change pizza guy to plumber, and then we're good. Okay, yeah, go. Yeah, because there's not like a stretch here. From you're you're like uh, you're on the border of. Uh, oh yeah, we're talking about the quality of the production, not necessarily the content. But um, so it's a slasher film. And so that means we have to establish that there is a slasher and that there is a threat. So what's the first inkling that we have that something is amiss up here in the idyllic, you know, frozen mountain peak? Uh, Somebody inserted a scene from Austin Powers is what happened. (laughs) (laughs) To tell you the truth. Made no sense, but was hilariously awesome at the same time. (laughs) uh, An excellent unneeded scene. Um, (laughs) Uh, who is this Eddie? This is Eddie. Yes, this is Eddie. Okay. Yeah, yeah but I like sure. the fact that we were all like, "Who the fuck is this random character?" And then later they kind of have to, yeah. Right. Why do I care that this guy just got killed? So we do cut to random dude driving on the snowy roads um, through his own uh, incompetence. He ends up in a ditch in the side of a snowbank, and he gets out to check it out. And the uh, the giant uh, bulldozer um, that he failed to notice slowly but surely uh, runs his ass over. <laughs> Very slowly. Yeah. Very slowly. Okay, and did I he miss something? No. Is there a reason why he couldn't get up? No. I, okay, Re- I thought maybe I missed Re- something. Yeah. No, I... Because all you need, again, is the footage of, you know, it's icy and he's slipping. And you just need that shot. Yeah. But they didn't even have that. But they did take time. I appreciated this. To get the shot of the bulldozer slowly approaching in his mirrored sunglasses, you know that was, that was good. Nice yeah, I'm surprised. I liked that. You like, know oh, they bravo. were really proud of that shot yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, yes they were. Yeah, you know they were. <laughs> but he was just laying on the ground for no reason. 
and then didn't get up. Yeah, just shock. Just scared. Yeah, I, I, I see. His legs were asleep, Michaela. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, couldn't get out of the way. Well, you know, I mean, it's snowy, so there's, um, you know, uh, like berms on either side, right, where the snow's been pushed away, so he couldn't climb up. The, I have no idea. But we don't even get well, to really... he doesn't even try to stand up. He's literally laying on his back. Yeah, crawling away from the <laughs> slow-moving bulldozer <laughs> as it's approaching him. He was, well, he was just in shock. He's like, there's no way I'm going to die right now, right? Yeah. Get up. <laughs> While the music very intensely is going, dun 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 dun. No, dun, you're going dun, to dun, die dun, right dun, now. Dun, yeah. yeah. Um, now, was was this the first instance that we get the POV with the ski glasses? Was this the first time we get this? Yes. This is great. Yeah. This wonderful. is the signature of this movie, in my opinion. This. It's wonderful. I love oh. uh, the how they the, the crack just makes it look like um like a Jaws POV. Like yeah. you're looking yes. for the mouth of a mouth of it's a monster wonderful. with his craggly teeth. I love it. I think it's a great. Uh, addition and frankly i don't believe that they came up with it i don't know know how it got into the movie but (laughs) the rest of the movie does not support this yeah because i think we're supposed to take right that this is uh the cracked glasses are jeff's yeah Yeah. and so this is jeff either back from the dead or it's somebody you know he survived somehow or whatever and he's come back for revenge because i think we do see the guy is in like the blue suit wearing the winter soldier uh covid mask right right? yeah um his face all covered and yeah this is our killer and apparently he ran the guy over because we see the aftermath we don't actually see the effect of what happened but you do see the bloody streaked road now i was sitting there going like okay so all these other characters are coming up to this chateau no it's uh the condo and is there just this one? They, they all dropped a cassette at the exact same time <laughs> and missed and the... missed it. No, <laughs> Colin, they were clearly so busy reading that pamphlet out loud to each other in the car. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, uh, they just totally missed the bloody streak of poor Eddie. So Eddie is uh, the paramour. I, I thought of... that they were. I thought everyone else had already gotten there, and he was the last one. No, the the, the pediatricians and all that. I thought they were still coming up, but maybe yeah, because when they came in, uh, Jeanette so. was like, "I just wonder where's Eddie. I'm so worried about him." Looking longfully out the window, where is yeah. Eddie? Yeah, yeah, dramatic. So we get all of our characters together, and um. Then I guess we're setting up the dynamics that are going on here, right? Because then basically the movie settles into basically becoming a soap opera, right? Yeah, yes, a nice relationship drama. Yeah. Um, except none of the relationships are terribly interesting at all. <laughs> no. No. Um who, who do we got? We got all together now we've got Jeanette, Trina, Carl's there. Who's Carl? The, the drug, drug dealer. The drug dealer. That's right. Which you'll never remember. <laughs> who, but he's the one who has, we didn't say, he has the gun. <laughs> because he's a paranoid drug dealer. He works in yes. pharmaceuticals, he tells everybody. Right? Yes. Um, and I, who else? Um, Jeanette is Delta Burke. Um, yeah, the doctor. Is there another? And the doctor's wife. Uh, right. Yeah. And the doctor's wife. Right. All of these people basically act like they just met each other right before the director yelled action. Um, there's a bizarre. Um, and then we cut away right to uh, this character, Alex, played by our writer, who is the real estate agent that they are all waiting for. Because like that becomes like a big thing. It's like, when are we going to talk to the real estate agent? You know, because we got to mm. sign the deal. He's got to come up and pitch us on this thing or whatever. And so we cut to his right. office where he's like, yep, I've got files on all these people that, you know, are coming up to the place and I have to go meet them. And you're like, what, what is the point of all of this? And uh, so there's a bizarre, like they're trying to set up, is there like, are they trying to in, uh, uh, set up like a psychic subplot or something here? In what way? Because some of the characters seem to be having uh, premonitions, because I think Alex says he has a premonition um, where he oh. has seen. <laughs> no, he says, yeah, he says, I had a premonition. What do you call those? It's his exact <laughs> line of dialogue. And it killed me. It killed me. I had a premonition. What are those called? It's like, fucking idiot. And his premonition. Is, yeah, and you his, got it. And your secretary so, is like, all right, hurry up and finish your line so I can say mine and get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. 
But he has a scene or a, a permanent, right? He sees, we see uh, Jeff's body and it looks like Alex, Jeff's in blue, Alex is in red, skiing up to the top of the ridge where Jeff is, bo- you know, his body's down there. And he's like, huh, I was just thinking of, it feels like I had a premonition. Something, you know, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so he had a premonition. And then uh, our drug dealer guy, Carl, right? He has a he has like a drug fever dream, doesn't he? Probably after snorting that uh, massive line of coke, right? It was. And in his dream, what's going on in that one? Was this when he was naked in the bathroom? Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. that was. I think that was just before this. Yeah, but this what? is the dream that this is the dream that he was having. He's in the bathroom doing coke or something, and then he imagines that he gets like stabbed in the bed. A bunch of times, and he wakes up all sweaty and screaming. Right, that's right. Yeah, right, because he sees he sees himself in the bed, like from the bed, ba- like he comes from the bathroom and sees himself sleeping in the bed and like stabbed and stuff. Yeah, so it was like an out of a it's like out of body experience kind of situation. Yeah, so then of course that's, we're foreshadowing. So this is, I was gonna say this is kind of like um, the dude who died in not Death Spa. What do we watch? Killer workout. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like that dream sequence where he dies and then dies. Yeah. 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 Bizarre. So that means, mm-hmm. of course, you know, that he's going to end up stabbed to death in, in the bed. Right? Yes. <laughs> sure. Uh, 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 <laughs> sure. I think, again, just a drug fever dream. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> right. That's his premonition. I, would, I wouldn't put too much too much stock in the premonitions part of those. Yeah, if I remember there, correctly, there's a good reason not, to not do drugs, kids. You yeah. don't want to have out of body murder premonitions, right? That would be Play bad. Ski weekends, though. Well, he's Cocaine's a hell of a drug, guys. <laughs> he's supposed to be having like this is a warning, right? So he's somehow going to be aware that there's a killer around or something, or he's going to end up dead in the bed. But he also, it seems like I think he has a dream that he's having sex with Jeanette in the in the tub. Yeah, that's his dream, right? Is it or is was that he his dream? Because I couldn't tell who the guy was because we watched this Blank on YouTube. questioning faces all around. Just like, because, who's because having I, the sex dream? Because I thought at one point he was having that dream. And then later on, there's another dream that's the exact same. But instead of him, it's Alex, the realtor. Is he having that dream about them now? I couldn't tell who the actor was. I couldn't tell if it was Alex or uh, Carl the, because. The first we were, time it was Carl. Second time it was Alex. Oh, it was. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So that's. But I don't know whose dream it is. Yeah. I'm not sure either. Are both of these guys dreaming about uh, having sex with Jeanette? I don't know. And the same. Are they having the same dream? Are they like inceptioning each other? It's the same dream? Yeah. Because I thought this was going to pay off as like this. You know, we're going to cut to eventually this is where these relationships go is to the bathtub. Right. But they, neither one of them do. And you're like, what in the fuck is happening in this movie? Uh, Carl gets rebuffed by Jeanette um, when Alex comes over. The real estate agent comes over to like talk to everybody, and of course, being she since, falls for him in a flat second. Yeah, because yeah. Eddie didn't show up. You know, her boyfriend mm-hmm. Eddie. They had a fight. She he didn't show up, and so she's throwing herself at Alex, <laughs> like of, on a bearskin rug in front of a fireplace, throwing herself at him in front of all of her friends. Yeah, yeah which because going by the geography of of the exactly next scene, um, they're all like two feet away, like staring at them. <laughs> yeah, but trying I mean, to figure out as they're romantically uh, falling for each other. Yes, this, yeah, because this movie works on stage play rules, where if you're like five feet away, like you're out of sight, out of, out of your track. <laughs> like. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you're out of the frame, you don't exist in this because that's what I mean. Basically, what we're talking about, it's like we're we're seeing that shot of two lovers in front of the fireplace talking intimately with each other and then the very next shot is like the room is full of people all around them and you're like oh shit was it happening well that yeah um <laughs> they just cut to the other people they're like are you guys okay <laughs> the dialogue in it was awesome too because i think they're like so what do you do well i work in real estate and i do all this and i'm kind of you know my i'm wealthy my father <laughs> came from a what do you do and she like explains her whole and i'm like Holy fucking shit, guys. <laughs> this is the tell don't show uh, school. Yeah, but 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 their hands are just slowly creeping all over each other 
as the conversation begins and her hands are creeping in his shirt and everything. Like, they're really going for it. Yeah. But all of this is interrupted by a call from Eddie. Or oh, not Eddie. Dead Eddie? Yeah, he says, I'm with Jeff. Daddy? Poor dead Eddie. Yeah. We don't actually hear this, but that's what she tells us is on the phone. Dead Eddie is saying he's with Jeff somewhere. So, like, what's going on? And this, of course, puts the kibosh on the romance between her and Alex. And so he takes off, right? And um, then the night settles in. So finally, like a good hour and 20 minutes into this hour and 22 minute movie, there's an hour <laughs> and 32 minutes, something like that. The killings begin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the quote unquote Jeff killer comes back finally after being gone for a good chunk of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's an it's an hour and 26 minutes. Hmm. And that's with all the padding of real estate talk and hmm. pediatrician talk. Well, it's at least an hour before murder num- number two occurs, right? I'd say so. It's, yeah. yeah, it's close. Murder number two, I think, was, uh, was it Jeanette? In the hot tub. No, it was Icicle. Yeah. Did, the uh, icicle did they get Icicle first? before? Uh, so this is the doctor and his wife. Um, mm-hmm. the, the thing, now, dear listener, dear brailer, dear reader, mm-hmm. going into this movie, there's one thing that Colin wanted. Mm-hmm. Just one thing. Just one. He had Just one, one request. Just yeah. one thing. And one. if we're going into a skiing slasher movie or a winter slasher movie, the one thing you want is Death by Icicle. Yeah. Yes. Colin, did we get Death by Icicle in this movie? And what are your feelings about that? Uh, I, I feel gypped. 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 Why do you feel gypped, Colin? Well, I because they gypped. had a whole buildup? Yeah, they had and- the icicle. Guy is chasing the girl, breaks the icicle off of the roof comes at her, you see her in a position where it looks like he's going to stab her right through the mouth with the mm-hmm. icicle. We're going to get, like, you know, your slasher movie moment. And the movie cuts away to show an ice pick going into a bowl of ice in the living room or the kitchen. Not cool. No. <laughs> Not cool. You got to give me... an hour into the movie. Not cool. But you do see her later with the icicle through her head yeah. into the car seat. That's true. Cause I so like you do the way, see the end result of it. I like the way that he took it back and put her in the car with her husband, who he stabs. He's sitting in the back of the car, and he pops up and puts the ski pole through his neck. And we actually do see that come out. So, okay, yeah. there is some uh, a little bit of gore there. Um, but uh, So Die Hard 2, is it the best icicle, Death by Icicle? Because he stabs the guy in the eye, and that's like, ooh! And then he breaks it <laughs> off and that's like you so you have to ratchet it up you stick it in and break it off right oh, yeah well, it's yeah that's, not that's operating on the same level as die hard 2 in any way <laughs> no yeah <laughs> the breaking the breaking off is the shitting down your throat of the i'm gonna take your head off and shit down your throat you are correct mm-hmm. is an icicle the best murder weapon to get away with it because it disappears yeah is there a movie that does that why do we th- think about gotta it? be yeah gotta be it's it's in something I've seen it. Yeah, it's where in a the, story. Somewhere. Or it was in no, it was in like an episode of like House or something. Like somebody got murdered with an icicle, and then they went back and found out it melted, and that was it. Yeah, it's yeah. been a thing. It's like what was he stabbed with? He was stabbed with some kind of knife. We can't find the evidence of the murder. Yeah, right. The murder. We just found liquid on the floor. Yeah, here's my question with that though. If you stab someone with it, wouldn't there get blood on the icicle? So if you just let it melt, then there's going to be blood in that puddle, right? Hmm. I guess it kind of depends where you are, as if that puddle of blood matters at any point. I don't know. Well, I don't think they're going to be able to, to get a fingerprint. That, like, that. If, if there's blood, a bloody puddle on the ground and someone was murdered with a stab wound, like it's not hard to put two and two together. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. Well, um, Dexter unless, would unless figure it out, am I right? Unless, your blood, <laughs> your, unless blood. your blood seeps out into the puddle. Yeah. And then it has time we, uh, to like dry and all the okay. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> well, my thought is like you just can't toss the icicle outside if it's cold enough to have icicles. You have to keep it indoors so it melts, right? Yeah, you lay it right now. Well, you stab the guy with it and you just leave it in his neck. And then it eventually melts and all the blood runs out and with the water. You know what? I, I feel like let's just not murder people. None of us are forensics. Let's just, <laughs> let's yeah. just. Yeah. <laughs> we're working. We're working this out like we're planning something, guys. <laughs> this is gonna come back on us later. Like, <laughs> yeah, you not said to, yeah. let's not detail the murders <laughs> on the public forum that we share with people. <laughs> All right, moving on. So, um, so that's two okay. people out of the way already. Yeah. So now we're so now we're back in the lodge, 
and Carl and is it Trina? Who is it? What's her name? Trina's the, the, the blonde. The, the brunette the is blonde. Jeanette. Wednesday Jeanette, Adams. Okay. Yeah. So I'm confused by this. Because they're having a little talk about the way she was like coming on to the real estate guy. And then Carl attacks her. And they cut away. Did that actually happen? Did he actually attack her? Or was he just so. imagining like what would happen if he actually acted on his impulses? I think it's, I was reading it as it's supposed to be like a red herring. Like, make you think oh maybe carl's the one doing all this i agree and mm -hmm. i think that's all the further it goes so he, it I didn't agree. actually happen i don't know if it did or not i think it doesn't matter if it did or not its purpose is to just be a red herring if that makes sense my friends i cannot offer my analysis because i got up to use the restroom i apologize i missed that whole hmm. thing i came back and she was going to the hot tub <laughs> See, that's, that's why it's confusing because the next scene is she's like going naked to the hot tub and he's just like passed out in the chair. So I'm like, wait, did that not happen? Because I feel like if he had actually attacked her, she wouldn't just casually be chilling in the hot tub. She'd be pretty upset. Right. So Have you, did, did you watch the previous hour and 10 minutes of this movie? <laughs> I think it very well, like we could cut to anything and I'd be like, makes sense. That's true. <laughs> you make a good point. I'm trying to put logic in a movie. That <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love that, we, that we're trying to dig into this. Like, that's great. Right. We're just like digging into rock right, right now. Fruitless effort. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> some, some really solid rock. <laughs> well, she has uh, a nice scene where she uh, rubs herself and uh, entertains herself while she's in the hot tub. And then uh, our killer sneaks up behind her with a radio heater? or heater. I thought it was a space heater. Yeah. And yeah. tosses it in, and bzz, there you go. So now we're down three. So that leaves us with only. Uh, so then, so then, uh, drug dealer uh, Carl, he takes his gun and wanders out into the woods. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. The killer has set bear traps in the perfect spot. Apparently, high traffic area. Yeah. Yeah. And Carl wanders into one of those and. Psh, there you go. And then when we cut back to Carl, he's been like stabbed in the side. We didn't actually see that happen, I don't think. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I, I know he stepped in both traps. And when we do cut to, back to him, he's bleeding from the side. I thought he like fell on another trap and it was just like closed around his side. But yeah, that's what I thought. I don't know. All I know, I think next we see him, he's bleeding from the sides and frozen to death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real quick. So now Gun we're done. I mean, this is yeah, all he happening. freezes pretty quickly. <laughs> And this is happening in like a 10 minute period, right? I mean, of the movie, <laughs> yeah. it's like, boom, 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 boom. We're just knocking everybody off. And we're like, who's yeah. the killer? You know, is it Which Jeff? Is, he's, he's frozen. He's totally frozen. Like his hands literally like up in the air. But then when she goes to get keys from his jacket, she gets blood all over her hand. Not so the blood's blood. not frozen, yeah. but the rest of him is. But she has to pry that gun from his cold, dead hand. Am I right? Um, I also like the fact that the hot tub is still working. So this is when uh, when uh, Trina wakes up the next morning. Oh, because um, uh, her husband Corey, uh, he gets he goes down and can't resist that like uh, cherry pie that's sitting out on the countertop. And so the way he was eating this was upsetting. I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. That's not good. With his face, he's holding it like a burrito it. and just I like yeah. it. And I didn't, I didn't like the chewing sound. No. Didn't like it. <laughs> no, we do not, we do not like pie eating sounds. Apparently not. No, I'm sure <laughs> it's an ugly looking pie. It didn't look good. Like right. I mean, I don't like cherry pie to begin with, but this didn't look. This was looks like great. This looks like grape pie. I thought it was mixed berry. Well, maybe. Well, like, when he got it all over himself, crust. I thought they were trying to do like you know, because then he gets stabbed in the shoulder. Right. Yeah. Some unseen assailant like plunges the the carving the pie carving knife into his shoulder and you can't tell the difference between the, the what is it does he have blood on his hands or is it pie filling and what's leaking out of him is the blood it's like the same well color, right so I, I thought, thought they were going to do a blood slash pie coming out of the mouth yeah. type thing to make it really disgusting I'm yeah. surprised they didn't I know some are I know they missed opportunity Trina wakes yeah. up the next morning and goes down to see like where's everybody at because the lights aren't working so I like the fact that even though we're brightly illuminated. She has to turn on a flashlight, uh, which serves absolutely no purpose. As she goes down to see where everybody is and starts doing what you do in horror movies is yell out the backyard. 
And then, <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Hello? Jeanette? Ver- Jeanette? Virginia? <laughs> um, <laughs> and then she finds all of her dead friends, which is also... But this is the thing. They didn't really build, or I didn't think so, but maybe you guys did, that they had built Trina up as the final girl. Like, what wow. characteristics does she have to make her final girl? She does exercises in the kitchen all day long. Yeah, on the countertops and all that. Well, That's all I got. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I got was that she was the first uh, character, because she was part of the love triangle. So she's the first yeah. character, maybe the, one of the first three characters that we're introduced to. So she's going to be the one who end, you know, survives. But the whole well, middle I mean, of the movie is the- not about her at all. Oh. Yeah, I was like, the, the motivation at the end, like, yeah, I understand, like, Jeff wants or whoever wants re- wants to revenge for Jeff because she upset him in the beginning. But that's all we get. Like, she's not leading lady at all. Mm-mm. Yeah. And I do like that. That's what I was saying. I like that, uh, as you were saying, that, you know, that somebody is so cold there, they freeze overnight. The body freezes overnight. Uh, Jeanette in the hot tub, even though the hot tub is still working because she's like half out her shoulders and head around. They're all covered with frost. Yeah. <laughs> frost that looks like fucking shaved coconut, man. This shit looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what yeah. does the, the blood say? Like the puffy paint that says Jeff was here, right? Jeff was here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that shit oh, was straight up craft store puffy paint, man. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, Attack of the Killer Jeffs, so I'm telling you. So, the, um, so she finds her husband stabbed in the kitchen he's still alive he tells her go get help so she runs out of the house and puts on some shoes but she's not wearing any pants <laughs> she just woke up <laughs> take so, the time to put shoes and a coat on shoes and Can't a coat be bothered to pants yeah so, well there were no pants at the front door i'll give her that and she's, she's kind of like, grabbing what you got yeah i gotta get out of here and so I think that serves like in the horror movie idea is basically that you're making your character vulnerable, right? Yes. That they are then in more in danger from the predator that's out there. Um, and the elements. Yeah. She ends up back at the house. Well, she gets uh, Carl's gun, prized the gun from his hand, goes back to the house to defend herself. And then she calls Alex because that's the only phone number that she has. Can't call the police. She know. found the card on the table again. She's like, oh, wait, Alex. Yeah. And calls him and like, Alex, they're all murdered. Please come up here as quick as you can. I think she said it with about that much conviction. Yeah. Am I wrong? I think that was yeah, it. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> <"Hey>, oper- <laughs> operator, there's, uh, there's been a murder. You know, cops. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Uh, What's your motivation here? Just say the line. Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just say What's it. your motivation? Uh, we got 10 minutes left in the work day. That's your motivation. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. She wakes Alex up, of course, because he's sleeping. So he hops in the car and drives all the way back up there. And then suddenly, while she's waiting for him, the killer Jeff appears. And uh, we get some moments of, uh, like, shining type rip where she's hiding behind the door and dude's breaking through the door. Uh, she hides under her bed and she stabs him in the leg, but it doesn't seem to have any kind of effect. I was kind of like, what's going on in that scene? She stabs, right. she stabs him. And on the moment that the contact is made with his leg, we cut to husband rallying now because his wife is in danger. He gets the gun. He's crawling ball bloody, like up the stairs to try and save her. Would it surprise you listeners? We spoil the ending of this movie that the killer turns out to be. Alex. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, but the way the the detail the about Alex, I cackled. I could not fucking handle it. Like it it's probably not supposed to be funny and it's probably supposed to be horrifying and I kind of felt a little bad laughing at it, but it was so stupid. <laughs> it was really stupid. What was it? it What's his motivation? Really stupid. Well, the, <laughs> first of all, the reveal <laughs> and again, we get some great cut twos in this movie. The cut to back to actual Jeff showing the other side of actual Jeff's conversation as to who he was talking to and it being Alex, but with a headband. Oh, it's the 80s. Is the, oh, yeah. is, is the greatest thing. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. How do we show that it's how do we show that it's four years earlier? It's different. Put him in a fucking red headband. And he's like, whoa, <laughs> so good. Spike his hair <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> his, his, yeah. Just, you know, like feather it just a little bit. It's a little bit longer. But it's the best cut to best cut to reveal. Yeah. Well, what's his motivation, uh, Michaela? Why is uh, Alex killing all these people? 
<laughs> because Jeff told Alex everything those guys did is and so Alex is getting revenge on behalf of Jeff but also himself because yeah. he lost his legs in this accident which this is where it lost me how did Alex fall off the cliff this right. is where it gained me this is where I was back in <laughs> but we find Amazing. it out because we see him pull the scissors out of his prosthetic legs which to me I'm sorry it was hilarious yeah he's it was like funny. yeah didn't work did it that's why <laughs> <laughs> and he pulls it up and he's just like he's got a fake leg and we're like and at this point they haven't revealed flashbacks yet so I'm like what the fuck is going on why does he have a fake leg and it's not even and then they go back to flashbacks and apparently he had an accident while checking on Jeff like yeah. he fell down and snapped his leg backwards which was also the greatest thing in the world when they cut to him just laying on the ground and his foot pointing the other way. Oh my God. It's so good. And yeah. I guess he somehow blames them for this. Right. He blames. That's what that was. I fully think he's like, fuck Jeff. They ruin. I, because he says he's like, I could have been a great businessman and a great skier, but you fucked it up for me because I broke my leg. How did that stop him from being a great businessman? <laughs> it's the best motivation i could have been a great businessman because of you and your friends if anything isn't it like a jumping point for you to be a motivational speaker right yeah right? About how you overcame this struggle like built-in business right there did you right? did you mean to make did you mean to make that pun with a jumping point kayla <laughs> <laughs> but i'm glad it worked out that way just, i think it just happens if you're around this movie yeah <laughs> It's oh. the goofiest thing because I thought for sure the whole like, you know, if you're saying you were at a clinic in Switzerland, you were there because of some kind of mental problem and you met a friend there, another patient, you're both there skiing and, you know, one of you dies and the other one, you know, carries on because that at least is we have some history. But it's like, no, they met that night at that table where Jeff told him, like, these people are horrible to me. Thanks for listening. I'm going to go ski. And then Alex goes to check on him, falls down, breaks his leg. And then he's like, I'm going to fucking kill those people who killed Jeff, who I don't know, but he seemed like a really nice guy. It's seriously, it's seriously like when you're in your 20s and you're really drunk and you go into the bathroom and you make best friends with the person in the bathroom. And then all of a sudden they tell you their life story and you like avenge them. <laughs> yeah. Right? You're like, I would fucking <laughs> die for you. Yes. Uh, avenge the Jeff. Not only that, he's going to wait four years to, to do the vengeance for this guy that he casually met one time. He wasn't really good at physical therapy. Like, he had to learn how to walk again. Then he got the the extension. And, you know, sometimes you say swap. Yeah. I mean, okay, so the an alternate title for this movie really should have been Avenging Jeff. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes it sound like, like a like a serious drama, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But but the yes. but the Jeff is what gives you pause. It's just like Avenging Jeff. Ooh. I'm not just think about this movie. I mean, Avenging son, you could Jeff. Fancy, you could fancy it up a little bit and spell it, you know, G-O. G E O F L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, right. Yeah. Then, then it's a November Oscar. Yep. <laughs> we could remake yes. this, right? Avenging, Avenging Jeff. Jeff. Oh yeah. my god, we totally could. Just take, the, <laughs> yeah, just take really the plot. Serious. Oh man, that's 2021 Saturday Night Freak Show. Now we're just throwing <laughs> them out every week. Yeah, we yeah, copyright. We're on a roll. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's been inspired. So, well, the the director clearly knows that they've seen Fatal Attraction or something. They know how you have to end a horror movie. You can't again. Uh, you have to kind of step it up. You do the one thing followed by the second thing. Uh, the violence, you know, goes one, two. You got to have that punch. And so he's trying to rape. I th he's trying to rape Trina because Jeff was fond of her or whatever. And Jeff never got her. So he's going to try and rape her. She kicks him off. He ends up falling back against the window. We're like, he's going to go out the face. So she final girl kicked him out the window. But then uh, Corey is also there with the gun and he shoots Jeff. Sorry, fake Jeff uh shoots alex. alex so it's like he got he's kicked out the window he gets shot out the window at the same time and then somehow a telephone cord so they actually go for the three fur the telephone cord gets wrapped around his fake leg <laughs> 
So what it should have done, ah! right, is that should have been one smooth move where he just like Whoa! and then the leg separates and he falls onto rocks or something and you know like he's been shot and he falls onto rocks just keep stepping no, it i up. love it more i love it more than he gets caught on the leg and he's got that moment of like he's hanging there after all this my leg is going to save me <laughs> <laughs> it was all worth it you know, I kind of Can feel I, like that. I kind of feel like that uh, Dwayne Johnson movie Skyscraper ripped this off a little bit. You remember there's that scene so. in the trailer where his his prosthetic legs starting to slip off while he's hanging from the building? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh! Well, I mean, if you have a prosthetic, you got to put Mind that you. thing to use. You know, yeah. Uh, but that was like say, the whole plot of that movie. That was the trailer, <laughs> right? Yeah. That I that I I love. I I love moments like this. I love the teamwork of it. Where she kicks him, and then he, he's been, because he's been crawling this whole time to try and get up to them. Where she kicks him, and then right at the moment he's about to, like, go through the window, he sh- shoots him too, and he goes through. I love shit like that. That, like, that's, that's great. Yeah. I know, yeah. It's, this is fun. This is, it's orchestration, right? This is what yes. you're, you're orchestrating your, your, your series of events. And Chekhov's yes. gun does get fired in the third act, so we've checked that off. And Duder falls eventually to his assumed death from gunshot wound. He lands on the snow and uh, uh, uh. cut to five years later. Another this, time jump. We we were yeah we were four years and now we're five years. And this, <laughs> this is amazing. I laughed. Family. I laughed a lot. Well, it's good to know that um, that Corey survived his uh, stab wound. Right, he does yes. live through this and the blood loss and all that. And he and uh, Trina are back up on the fucking mountain. Because they just don't know to leave well enough alone. Only this time they've got their little five-year-old or four-year-old kid with them. And they're building a snowman. There's two kids, isn't there? Was yeah. there? Son and a daughter, yeah. Okay, they got two kids. They're building this Perfect gig- nuclear family. What could go wrong, you know? Yeah, because, mm-hmm. and that's the thing you do. If it's wintertime, you build a gigantic snowman. And so she puts the last final piece on the snowman, which is an eye. And I thought that the eye actually turned, but I think it was just falling back out, right? Did it turn to look at her? No, I, I think, think it was just, just falling. I think it was yeah, just think falling. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, the, the blood was coming. Yeah, then blood yeah. trickles out of the eye socket, and she looks at it like, what? And we get a full-on Carrie Friday the 13th ending where fucking Alex or Jeff explodes <laughs> from the gigantic snowman freeze frame. Freeze frame. So, in full free, ski suit, it, mask, the whole get up explodes out of the snowman. I wish it had cut to like the song Freeze Frame that they use in like America's Funniest Home Video. Yeah. It's like Freeze Frame, Freeze Frame. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's so, how you end a ski movie. We're going with this was a dream, right? This is the nightmare that she's having. It didn't we'll, have her we'll waking never know, up. Colin. Yeah. Yeah. We'll never know. Just, I don't know. You have to wait. You have to wait for the sequel, Avenging Jeff. <laughs> right, Ice Two, Avenging Jeff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coming soon. Is uh, is Jeff the director still alive? He could still make it. Jeff, are you listening to I, this? No I one else talks R&D's about your now, movie. Colin. I think <laughs> it's in our hands. No, I was going to say no one else talks about his movie, so I'm sure he's listening to this. He's like, "What did they think of Ice?" Don't be rude, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't want another Larry Black situation on our hands, please. <laughs> Fuck you, Larry. <laughs> well, Jeff, I tell you, you're going to have to hang on for a little while. We're going to tell you what we thought of your movie. But uh, first of all, we're going to go around. Or first of all, we're going to read some of our listeners mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to uh, summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail masters masters the mail i've got the mail so many letters our followers are rising rising why thank you igor you're gonna have to sweeten those claps colin uh, i know I just we're gonna need some <laughs> effects work in here <laughs> he's got a little broken ski visor on today and how appropriate oh and a scarf, because you can't go skiing without your scarf. Yeah. He's actually wearing the uh, same thing the alien was wearing from last week to go skiing in. That's actually not bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, we want to remind you at home how uh, you can get a hold of us uh, by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Sarnia Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Sarnia Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along. On Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, uh, we told you if you write a review, man, we'll read it. And so on Apple iTunes, 
crazy Ooh. Star Wars fanboy writes in and says, great podcast. Hey, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> you had me sweating. Yeah. It was going to be a bad review. <laughs> I did too. I was like, oh, God. Like, I was like, oh, shit. Thank you, sir. <laughs> appreciate Sorry, it. Fan. We appreciate that. Uh, about uh, tonight's movie, which was called Iced. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, I never saw this movie, but I assume it's about a group of poor but amazing skiers versus the rich preppy high school ski team, and one of them is a psycho killer. Honestly, I'm surprised there aren't more killer ski movies. Skiing was weirdly popular in the 80s. There were so many movies centered around it. Right? And it's like aerobics and then skiing. Yeah. Right. I think, I see... Michael's got that's the movie that's the ski right. horror slasher movie that hasn't been made Absolutely. yet. Absolutely, yeah. I was like, I was like, you make good points all around, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I would watch around. that. <laughs> um, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Nothing But Trouble. Uh, Carson Snar wrote in and says, uh, "It sounds like this film was um, nothing but trouble." He's actually named. <laughs> you are correct, sir. Um. Grant Parrish says, Dear Holly and Michaela, I am so sorry. So, 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 so sorry you were put through this. You didn't deserve it. No one deserves this. You are lovely and you are loved. I appreciate your dedication to professionalism and entertainment that you participated in this quote unquote film. Love, light, respite, an entertained listener who wants better for your future viewing experiences. Heart emoji. You know what? Thank you. I want better from my comments. Thank you for your support. Thank you for making this a safe space. No. Because <laughs> I did not feel safe on that episode. Oh, Thank you. Boy. Sir. I know. Yeah, I don't... Grant, you just shot the top to, uh, the top of my favorite listeners list. So yep, go, you're out there. All right, Grant. Good good work. Uh yeah, I can't I can <laughs> safe spaces. A... I don't know how many times the word triggered was used on that episode. Probably a freak show uh record uh travis legler wrote in and said i don't know i love the ladies but i kind of love sean more for putting them through this <laughs> yeah well, we know you love sean we know <laughs> Jesus. Like, hey let's not attack people okay <laughs> <laughs> well uh travis says well at least when stephen king only directed one movie it had great music some fun visuals and a lot of shit blowing up so yeah, and Stephen probably the King same Stephen amount of cocaine. <laughs> yeah, makes Stephen King look incredibly competent as a director, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I was like, oh, Stephen King's not so bad, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah let's give him some more cocaine. Let's, yeah. have, let's have him do another one. Well, uh, there was some uh, contention on that episode about the twins characters, uh, loved by some, hated by others, loved by all, hated by all. I'm not sure, but Sean Matthew Whitford or Whiteford, wrote in and said, honestly, I would love a cut of this movie with these characters just not in it. It's the only true holdup for me. Really? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a big contributing factor. It's I mean, I can understand why if you're on the fence and then those two show up, like, you're just like, all right, I was on the fence, but I can't, I can't go yeah. forward with this. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Wow, those were uh, gigantic, uh, malformed twins and baby diapers. One played by Dan Aykroyd in that movie. Mutants. Disturbing. Yeah. Very disturbing. Uh, Appy L says, I forgot that Taylor Negron was in this movie, R.I.P. Um, Taylor Negron yep. played uh, one of the Brazilians who accompanied Chevy mm -hmm. Chase and Demi Moore on the trip. Uh, he's been in a lot of stuff with Angels in the Outfield. a lot of stuff. Um, Mike yeah, Welch. Faces. You're like, I've seen him in everything. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Mike Welch also wrote in about him and said, what? Mr. Pizza Guy had a real film role? Uh, that was Taylor Negron in um, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, right? He was the pizza guy. Yeah. yeah. Right. So there you go. May he rest in peace. Um, so tonight, we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, which was called Iced, starting with me. I think I'll go first tonight. Um, Iced. Uh, wow. Uh, there probably should be more of these movies. Uh, I think we all agree this is, uh, as far as we know, because, uh, again, dear listener, if you know something that we don't, please tell us. Um, but as far as we know, it feels like an untapped area, uh, uh, ripe with potential. Um, but Iced tonight, um, 
I'm rather surprised at how much I enjoyed this movie or had fun with it. Um, cause yeah, it's a, it's a fucking weird movie, but I mean, I, I mean, I laughed, uh, I didn't cry, but I did have questions and comments. Um, it's, it was fun. It was fun for me. Like it is absurdly bad. The acting is horrible. Um, uh, there's pieces of this movie in here for no reason, but there's just enough weirdness in this where like, I had a good time. I really thought when we didn't get the icicle kill, I, that was almost a, I'm out. I'm the, come on. We can't do the icicle kill. Let's go. But it did enough other weird shit with the characters that, uh, it, you know, it entertained me tonight. It was surprising. I almost, uh, I almost had more fun with the, just the weird, 80s character shit and then plus we got like a really weird ski murder movie um odd movie from top to bottom but i had a fun time tonight surprisingly um i i think you should watch it uh if you can you know track it down and i'm really surprised something like this like why is this the movie that doesn't have a blu-ray and commentaries and shit like that like why hasn't this been cleaned up and put out there for the masses i'm surprised no, I mean, you know, maybe you can't at this point, but uh, I had a fun time tonight, uh, again, surprisingly. But I'm going to recommend that you watch Iced and then wait for our sequel, Iced 2, uh, when it comes out next winter. Avenging, so, Avenging Jeff. Avenging Jeff. Um, so I give it I give it three and a half icicles out of five. Uh, and uh, there we go. So, Holly, what did you feel of Iced? Um... <sighs> This was this is an odd one. This is a very odd one because I, you know, you're saying that you're you can't believe this doesn't have a Blu-ray yet, and I'm like, I can believe that this doesn't have a Blu-ray. I totally understand why this doesn't have a Blu-ray, <laughs> but at the same time, I had an immensely fun time watching it. It's just one of those things. I will say that if it had just come on TV and I was watching it by myself without a group chat and without the podcast, like. I don't know that I would have liked it. I, I don't know that I would have enjoyed watching it because there's just a different atmosphere when we watch something for this. Um, mm. So I so I think like, you know, I agree with what you're saying. It's a bizarre movie, top to bottom. It's just weird, wacky shit. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, we watched a, a YouTube version that's a really horrible copy of this. It's, it's bad. <sighs> And like all and all those things put together, I'm like, I don't know if I could honestly recommend this to someone. But at the same time, like the people that listen to this show, if you watch it in the same capacity that we watch it, you would probably laugh at it, too. So it's like I wouldn't recommend it to average people, but I will say the caveat is you should watch it with other people to laugh and have a good time. So that is the way I'm going to recommend it. Don't watch it by your, probably don't watch it by yourself. You might not enjoy it as much. I don't know. You might whatever. <laughs> you might not make it through it. I don't know. You might. You might not. Like so. So I'm saying, if I had watched it by myself, I probably would have hated the shit out of this movie. But watching it with you guys for this purpose, it was a good time. So if you're gonna check it out, check it out with other people to make fun of and laugh and have a good time. So that's my that's my pseudo recommendation. Colin, what did you think? I can't believe what I'm hearing here tonight, to be honest with you. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, well, I mean, I've, I guess I've been voicing my criticisms of the movie as we've gone tonight. It's like, no, this is a horrible horror. I was like, this is one of the worst movies that we've ever seen on the show. It's like, <laughs> everything is so horribly bad. And I think it, uh, you know, it commits that cardinal sin of, uh, you know, is a movie good or bad or not? It is just fucking deadly boring. It's just these people talking about shit that it's, uh, you know, they're not even building character. They're just giving them shit to talk about. That's not really creating or differentiating their personalities. You know, they've got financial troubles or so-and-so's trying to screw so-and-so. It's like, it's a, it is like a soap opera setup, you know? Uh, I'm sorry, Colin. It's a slope opera. A sl oh. <laughs> Zing! <laughs> wow. You would sit on Michaela, that one for very, a while, Michaela. Yeah. I'm very proud. Of you. <laughs> I haven't sit I thought about that watching the movie, and I was like, I'm gonna write that down. There you go. All right. <laughs> I tried it out on it's my husband proper. first to make sure it worked. Yeah. So. All right. Well, well done. 
Well, I like that you workshopped a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it only that, happens like twice a year, so. Oh, you know. <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, I mean, that kind of goes like uh, this movie feels like you're watching a writer slash actor workshop session, you know, stage play thing. Uh, I mean, it's just it's train wreck bad. Um, I think it's not on Blu-ray because I think you know, based on just the 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 opening titles are clearly like a '80s digital effect. This maybe movie was made for um, v- the VHS market was probably put together on you know three quarter inch tape, so there's no film master to make a a, a, True. a Blu-ray or a high definition version of it. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's, it's not available for streaming anywhere. We found it on YouTube, um, but it was just. Uh, yeah, it was it was deadly boring. Um, the kills come in you know, the last ten minutes, and they're like not enough. I mean, it's, there's a there's a guy making a movie that doesn't know how to do staging, how to make a shot interesting, you know, where to cut on how the lines are terrible. I mean, it's just it's it's really it's a bad movie. And I guess yeah, I I, I don't think um, objectively I can't say. <laughs> You know, even though, because we, you know, Holly's like, well, it's different when we watch it because we can't turn it off. We have to watch it the whole way through. And we're trying, we're fine. We have that survival mechanism where we're like, well, we got to find something entertaining. But the, funny, the funny thing <laughs> is, is that you're sitting here saying, like, I couldn't possibly recommend it. And all the bad things you're saying, Sean and I, who just recommended it, we're like, yeah, 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 well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I get to, you get to sit there and fascinate over why did he make that decision? Yeah, Colin, no one said this decision. was a good movie. Yeah. It's a terrible uh, movie. That's no one right. said it was good. I, so there you go. This is one of those movies. Different. The only way that you can recommend it is like a backhand compliment where like all you aspiring filmmakers out there, you know, uh, don't give up hope because these people got a movie actually made and produced. So if they can do it, you can too. It's uh, inspiring. Yeah. There you go. Inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> uh michaela two, two weeks in a row are inspiring <laughs> <laughs> i like lax i would recommend last week's crazy fucked up movie uh yeah. michaela what'd you think of the movie wait have you seen you hadn't seen it before you didn't check no the, i had never seen it before didn't check the chamber um, before you fired <laughs> <laughs> and so we all have to die oh sean like you've never been on the other side of that ever huh no. um but so i have a, I have a long running list of things i want to bring to their freak show and when i can't decide i'll like kind of scroll through my list and this had been on there for a while i think i initially heard it first mentioned on the shockwaves podcast um sometimes they'll mention things that i'm like i've never heard of that and so and then i'll write it down and i was like man because i honestly cannot think of another ski resort based slasher movie i cannot think of one hmm. if it's out there please let us know because i'd love to see it but wait, wait. there's a snowboarding resort movie that's uh, cold prey uh from norway from the director of Tomb Raider. There you go. All right. Old Prey. But it, there's sequels. Yeah. yeah, it's like a slasher movie sequel franchise. Nope. Um, I feel like every winter horror movie is like a survival story and not like a slasher, you know? Um, and I don't care about that. Like survivalist movies like that just don't interest me. But I had a lot of fun with this. It was really stupid, but that's like what I expected. Like I did not have high hopes for this movie going into it, considering we could not find it anywhere other than a VHS transfer on YouTube, you know? Um, I do think I agree with Sean that why does this not have a Blu-ray release? Like <laughs> you think about all the stupid things on Vinegar Syndrome and Synapse that we've watched that got a Blu-ray release. And it's crazy that this one hasn't like I can't believe I think, Kathy's Curse think, has a Blu-ray and this doesn't. You know, I think Colin's right, though. I think this was made specific like the, this is on a VHS and that's it. That's your yeah. master. That's so sad. Yeah, <laughs> like It makes right, you wonder. Kind of it makes you wonder how many other treasures we've lost that Lots. way. You know? Everything like, that went to tape in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sad. Like, obviously, this movie is complete amateur hour and it's not good by any means. But I agree. It is inspiring in the sense that like, wow, I could I could make this like I could rent out a condo for the weekend and make a movie like this. Um, it's I laughed a lot. I had a great time. It did a few unexpected things, so I can't say I completely saw it all coming. Didn't expect the Coke mirror situation. Didn't expect the <laughs> the bulldozer, you know, stuff. The so, jumping off the cliff, yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was hilarious, and I I really enjoyed it. And like on top of that, you get this like brown '80s ski aesthetic rubbing up against like these neon colored jackets and it's just it really is like a time capsule movie on top of that so i definitely think you should check it out i agree probably don't watch it alone make it a midnight movie situation have fun with it 
you know, watch it under the influence of something. Absolutely. And I, I, but I have to recommend it. It was just so much fun and so stupid. All right. Well, that's uh, is. iced. We're putting it on ice. Bam. There you go. Uh, all right. So next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. Please let it be in HD. What are we watching next week? It's in HD. Uh, we're going to go back to the classic, uh, when animals attack genre for a movie called slugs. Ooh. All right. From the director of this for a while from the director of pieces. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Slugs. All right. So <laughs> oh, that's, no. <laughs> that's next week on the Saturday night freak show. We hope you'll join us as always. Thanks for listening. And until then the basement is going dark.